Good morning. Uh, welcome to this teaching case on global supply chain risk management. Uh, initially, I will give you an introduction to this specific case uh, and the setup of the company that we are going to talk about in the case. And then I will take you through the simulation tool uh, to show you how you and the students can access various pieces of information for decision making. So let's start. The uh, objectives of the teaching case are First and foremost, the student should be able to map the end-to-end -end supply chain on a piece of paper and superimpose this map with the various pieces of information. So they should be able to see in one shot how the company supply chain is structured, how the various links in the supply chain interface with each other, and therefore what are the potential risks the company is exposed to. The second objective is to understand what could be the possible short-term impact on the demand. So as we have seen, you know, in a COVID situation, demand for certain product may go down and the demand for certain kind of products may increase. So we will see if for this specific company, what could be the possible impact on the short-term demand. And then we will also look at the supply risks. Uh, what kind of risk the company is exposed to and then based on the analysis, what could be the possible risk mitigation plan to deal with any kind of problem or the uncertainty. The third objective is to uh, map the medium to long term risk. So as we know, once we move out of the COVID situation, uh, we are going to have a new normal, which will be very different from, uh, from the kind of situation we had pre COVID. So by looking at what could be the possible scenario going forward in medium to long term, uh, analyzing what could be the new, new risk that can happen, and then what kind of mitigation plan can be developed. So these are the three major outcome of the teaching case on the risk management. So let me give you some introduction about the uh, company that we are talking about in the case. The name of the company is The Fresh Connection. Uh, the company is into manufacturing of fruit juices and uh, the company is based out of uh, Europe, which is Netherlands. Uh, there are four uh, macro processes in the company supply chain, which is source, make, deliver and plan. Uh, the company does not have the return process. So I will take you, you know, to uh, some of the uh, overviews of these processes. Okay, companies uh, have uh, two pack types. One is the carton one liter pack and pet 0.3 liter bottles. And it has three flavors, the orange, orange vitamin C and the orange mixed with mango. So uh, in totality, the company has six SKUs. And very important thing is the shelf life of the product, which is limited to 20 weeks. So it means from the date of manufacturing till the time uh, the product is consumed, you have only 20 weeks available. So after 20 weeks, the product is not fit for consumption. However, there is a catch here. The catch here is the commitment of the shelf life by the company to its customers. So its customers are the retail chains. So the company has to promise a balanced shelf life. So let's say if the company promises 75% balanced shelf life, which means Whenever they deliver the product to the customer, it should have 15 weeks balance available. Okay, which means the company has only five weeks available in their own supply chain. So anything which crosses five weeks threshold, that product cannot be supplied to the customer because uh, based on their commitment of the balance shelf life. So which means anything which crosses five weeks, that becomes obsolete for the company. So similarly, you know, if the commitment is 80%, which means the balanced shelf life has to be minimum 16 weeks. And the company has only four weeks available within your own supply chain. So anything which crosses four weeks in that scenario will become obsolete. So the product does not become obsolete after 20 weeks for the company. For the company, it becomes obsolete as soon as it crosses the threshold based on what they have committed to their customers. So it has three customers. So the three customers are the uh, retail chains. The first one is the food and groceries. 
So it has 500 stores and they are supply chain leaders. So they are, they, they, they are very meticulous in their planning. They always uh, order in a mix of assortment. Uh, so they expect very high levels uh, of service. Uh, the second uh, customer is the land market. So they are the second largest, but they are discounters. So they always look for those SKUs which has the promotions, price off, so that they can push those products in the market. The third customer is the uh, Dominic's. So they have 50 stores which are attached to the gas stations or the petrol pumps. So they only sell PET bottles because normally a customer walking into a petrol pump, they want ready to drink pack, uh, not a bulk pack of one liter. So they only keep PET bottles, not the one liter pack. Coming to the supplier's footprint, which is going to be very critical from the risk management point of view. So the company has five suppliers. So for example, the company, the oil supplier is based out of uh, US in Miami. Uh, then you have vitamin C supplier based out of China. And then you have other suppliers based out of uh, uh, France and Spain. So what students will have to do is to understand what are the potential risks which each of these suppliers are exposed to based on their location. For example, you know, Miami, which is on the eastern coast of USA, uh, is exposed to the risk of hurricanes. Similarly, vitamin C, we already know what kind of risk uh, you know, are there in China. Uh, and not just that, but also you know, the kind of risk uh, which may you know, happen uh, for the movement of these products from the supplier location to the uh, location of the fresh connection, which is in Europe. So let's say if the product is transported from China to Europe uh, by sea, then you know you also have uh, you know the risk of uh, pirates um, in Somalia, right? Uh, similarly, you know there could be a risk of flood somewhere or strike somewhere or earthquake. So the student will have to do a bit of research to figure out what are the possible risks which these suppliers are exposed to. Now coming to the operations of the company, so there are. Uh, that uh, the operations has the inbound side. So all the uh, liquid materials or the pulp material that is taken into the tank, uh, it comes to the storage tank, okay? It's stored in tankers. And some of the products which come, you know, uh, like packing products, uh, like pet bottles, one liter carton, or even the vitamin C, which is, uh, uh, which, is which comes in uh, drums. So they all get stored in the palletized warehouse. So there is a limited capacity of palletized warehouse. Similarly, there also is a limited capacity of the tanks. So how much safety stock, et cetera, you can keep, again, there is a limitation on that. So then, you know, once the products uh, are there in the inbound warehouse, then it goes to the mixing operation. So the pulp, along with the other ingredients, gets mixed with water. And once the batch is completed, then it goes for the filling line. So there you get the uh, one liter pack and the uh, 0.3 pet bottle uh, packed. And then these finished products move to the outbound warehouse, which is again a palletized warehouse. And then from the outbound warehouse, these products are shipped to the customers against the order. So one thing which is critical here is, this is make to stock environment, which means all the production and the ordering of materials on the suppliers, et cetera, is based on the forecast. And the actual delivery to the customer happens from the uh, inventory uh, based on their customer orders. Another important uh, area is the contract index. So what it means, uh, the prices uh, are fixed, you know, the prices with the customers and suppliers are fixed. However, the uh, Price, the sales price or the purchase price can be impacted through something called the service level agreement. So as you uh, agree for the higher service level with your customer, so as you promise more uh, shelf life or better delivery reliability, and there are various other parameters uh, that we will go through. Uh, so if you promise more, the customer is happy to pay you more. So if that is the case, the contract index will change from one to more than one. But let's say if you promise less than what customer is expecting, then the contract index can actually come below uh, one. So which means you will earn less revenue. However, there is a catch here. 
The catch here is what you promise to the customer if you do not deliver as per your promise. So the customer is going to charge you heavy penalties. So it is very important that you promise to the customer is something what you can actually, actually deliver. Or the uh, other way around, what you promise to the customer, you have to ensure that there is an alignment in the rest of the supply chain to be able to deliver those according to those promises. Otherwise, you will end up paying penalties. So if we are doing a full-fledged simulation, then it's a team activity. So each team has four roles, which is the management team of the uh, company. Uh, so these roles are VP sales, operations, purchasing, and supply chain. VP sales is responsible for demand management. Operations is responsible for capacity management, the capacity of manufacturing line, the inbound warehouse, and the outbound warehouse. And purchasing is responsible for the supplier management. And VP supply chain is responsible for inventory management for the raw materials and finished products, as well as planning of production. So ultimate uh, objective of this uh, simulation is to maximize the ROI of the company. So it's not looking at you know, the individual KPIs of each functional area. Yes, those are important, but the most important objective is the ROI. So that is the only objective on which the performance of the team will be measured. So given this background, uh, now we will move on to the simulation tool and I will show you how to access various pieces of information that is required for solving the case. Just give me a moment, you know, I'll change my screen to the uh, browser. Okay, so uh, once uh, I share the link with you and you register yourself, similarly, students can also register on the same link. So you will see a screen here, which looks like this. So it has two sides. On the left-hand side, you have my courses. On the right-hand side, you have my portal. So under my courses, if you go down, so there will be a field which is called code entry. So I will also share the code with you and once you enter that code and submit, then you will be able to get the access to the simulation on the right hand side under my portals heading. So I have you know, a lot of uh, material here uh, for the colleges and corporates, but you will get that information here and you will get a, a button here where, uh, which you can click uh, to access the simulation. So it will say enter simulation. The moment you click on enter simulation, you will be taken into the tool here, which looks like this. So initially, when you get into the simulation, uh, what you will see is the dashboard of the company, which will give you an overview of the performance by the functional area. So if you see four boxes, you can click on each of these boxes. So each box represents a functional area. And at the bottom, what you can see is the major KPIs of the functional area. So one of the common KPI is the ROI for all the functional area. And then the other KPIs will change according to different functions. So as you can see here, okay? This is just an overview. Uh, we have more detailed information available on the tabs above, okay? So first we will do, uh, first we will go through the finance tab, okay? So once you enter into the finance tab, you will see the financial information of the company. So as you see here, you know, the company is making negative ROI and then it will give you what is the revenue, how much is the revenue uh, by the customer. So are you getting bonus or you're paying penalties? Okay. And how much is the net realized revenue? So all that information is available here. Similarly, you also have the information on the cost of goods sold, which is uh, broken down into the purchase value and the production cost. Okay. Then you have the gross margin. Then you have a lot of indirect costs 
okay uh, and then uh, you get the operating profit and then at the bottom you have the investments in the in the form of fixed investment investment in the stocks machines payment terms and the uh, operating profit divided by the investment is how you arrive at the roi of the company so this particular analysis will help the student to get a complete understanding about the financial position of the company and how each of their decisions in the supply chain or any functional area will impact the financial performance okay so this is the starting point now let's move on to the sales uh, tab so once you move to the sales tab so on the left hand side or sorry on the right hand side so you will see the agreements made with different customers so these agreements are basically the service level commitment you have made the shelf life commitment the order deadline the payment terms and so on and so forth okay so you can also see here in terms of the category management so which skus are being supplied to which particular customer so that can also be changed you can also look at the forecast okay so all that information is available on the right hand side on the agreements okay all your decisions on the left hand side so you have various reports the detailed reports where you can see a whole lot of kpis so let's say if i uh, click on the customer report so i'll be able to see uh, the service level that we have achieved in the previous round with the customer how much was the revenue how much was the gross margin uh, number of pallets that we shipped to them uh, attain shelf life distribution cost and so on and so forth similarly if we click on the product report we can have all the information about the product you know how much product we sold to which customer uh, how much was the value volume uh, how much was the uh, obsolescence so whole lot of information and kpis are available here okay so uh, if we talk about this teaching case very important thing here is on the uh, impact on the demand the short term impact on the demand and also you know medium to long term impact so for example we know that uh, dominic uh, customer uh, th they are actually uh, attached to the gas stations so during the covid period if the customers are not going to fill in the gas okay so what will happen to the entire demand which is coming out of dominics so what is the kind of demand risk which is there will there be any change in demand for the 1 liter pack because during such period the consumers normally tend to store a bulk pack or bigger pack as compared to a smaller pack so what could be the changes possible changes in the demand for various packs okay uh, so so one you know they needs to understand the demand pattern and the potential impact of such event on, on the uh, changes in demand pattern or the mix uh, assortment mix another important thing is if you want to access any information uh, about the customer or anything you want to know about you know these parameters uh, which have been you know uh, used as part of the agreement so you can click on this i so if you click on this i it will take you to a detailed level of information so actually this tool is self sufficient so all that help is available for every uh, single term or every single entity that is being used whether it is the supplier or customer or we talking about uh, you know the production equipment etc so every information is available in the form of help so you don't need to refer to anything else similarly we have information available for supply chain management we have for operations now coming to the purchasing which is going to be again very critical from the risk management point of view especially the supply risk so you have on the right hand side various agreements with your suppliers so which include you know the quality which you have agreed with the supplier the lead time the delivery reliability mode of transportation payment terms uh, and so on and so forth okay so all these uh, uh, pieces of information will help you to uh, understand what could be the possible risk associated with each of these suppliers and what could be the possible impact on the uh, performance of the company 
So similarly, you have the reports available on the left-hand side. Uh, you can have the report by supplier. You can see how the, each of the supplier is performing against uh, what they have committed. Uh, you have the components by uh, report, you know, how much component uh, you are buying. So that will give you the kind of spend you are having on each of these components and what could be the potential impact on the company's performance. So this is how the entire information uh, is organized in this simulation tool. Uh, and you can access this information for the decision making. The only uh, restriction that you will have as part of this teaching case that you won't have this calculate button, what you can see here, which means if you want to make any changes here uh, in the decisions, etc., uh, you can make the changes, but you will not be able to see the outcome by pressing the calculate button because that calculate button will not be activated for you. So idea here is that you uh, access this information, analyze the information, and then use this information to solve the case problem. Okay. So let's get back to our PowerPoint presentation. So I'll then you know, explain about what are the problems which the students have to solve as part of the case. So give me a moment again, I will shift my screen. Okay, so we left our presentation here. So coming back, okay. The first problem uh, or the first block of the case is the supply chain mapping. So what it means, uh, the students will have to map the end-to-end -end supply chain of the company. So we're talking about this specific company, the Fresh Connection. And once they map, uh, they will also have to superimpose the map with the important information. For example, you know, uh, how much is the revenue for each customer? How much is the demand from coming from each customer? what is the actual service level against what we promised and then you know putting all this information for every link of the supply chain including the outbound warehouse bottling mixing inbound and, and also the suppliers okay so once you have uh, uh, mapped the entire supply chain with this important information then the students will be able to see how these pieces interact with each other okay what are the potential disconnects which are there in the supply chain and which are the areas which are exposed to various kinds of risks okay so this is the starting point so this will help the students to identify various risks that the company is exposed to okay the second block of the case is to identify the short-term risk so the first thing what they have to do is to do the spend analysis of the component. How much money is being spent on each of the component or the RMPM that company is buying? What is the impact of each component on the overall revenue of the business? For example, if you take uh, orange, orange is something which is going into all the SKUs. If you don't have the orange, then the entire business stops. But let's say if you don't have vitamin C, then it you know only two SKUs. Uh, get impacted and you can actually see how much is the revenue of those uh, two SKU is okay So it will help you to assess the impact of various risks on the business of the company Then you can also look at the size of the supplier versus the uh, fresh connection So which will give you an idea, you know, how attractive this uh, company fresh connection is to the supplier Will they give the importance to fresh connection or not even in case of any event? Uh, you know, if, if that were to happen. Location of supplier, uh, as I said, you know, each location is exposed to a different kind of risk, which is a matter of uh, research uh, to be done by the students. And also the lead time of the deliveries from the supplier, which will have an impact on time to recover in case of any uh, specific event that happens. So all that information can be put together in the form of uh, a table. Uh, this is just a suggestion. You can, you know, have your own table design. And most important thing is once they identify the risk, they have to assess the impact of that risk. They will also have to assess the probability of that risk uh, happening, again, based on their research about that risk, risk uh, which is being associated with the supplier. So then they can, you know, assess, assign the level of risk, uh, could be high, medium, and low. 
and then for every risk they have to come out with the mitigation plan now that's here uh, you know where the students will have to apply their knowledge about the risk management uh, given that they have identified certain risk for this particular company so how will they come out with the various kind of mitigation plan so that is something which where they can apply their uh, knowledge about the risk management the third block is to assess the demand changes so which is again uh, as i said you know how the demand can change uh, in a situation like covid um, and then even you know going after covid uh, you know for quite some time in medium term uh, the movement of people will be very restricted so will there be sufficient demand for the 0.3 pet liter uh, bottle or how will the demand be impacted for the 1 liter carton bulk bulk pack so the students will have to assess some of the impacts on the demand changes and then they will have to put together you know what could be the possible impact in a table of form by the customer okay so as i said you know dominic is the one which will be the most impacted with an event like this uh, but would there be any impact positive or negative for other customers so again it has to be you know uh, you know uh, analyzed and put together and then you know um, they have to make a plan how will they uh, uh, face this kind of a changes uh, in the demand scenario so what kind of agility and responsiveness they can bring into the company to be able to uh, respond to any kind of changes in demand so here again you know they will have to use their knowledge uh, and understanding about the uh, agile supply chain uh, how do you make it happen and apply to this particular case the fourth block is the uh, assessment of medium to long term risk um, so as i said you know the normal new normal uh, when we get out of the covid situation would be different from you know the uh, situation that we had before getting into covid so in a new normal what could be the possible risks that the company would be exposed to uh, in medium to long term so students can you know classify categorize those risk under strategic uh, you know operational or financial and other kind of risks and then they can uh, prioritize these risks based on the probability of happening and the impact on the company's performance okay and then put down the mitigation plans okay so so this is what we are suggesting you know how uh, students should go about addressing this particular case um, again you know you can tailor it change it according to your requirement uh, so this is how you know this whole uh, case on the uh, risk management is designed so so this is how you can actually use it with your students okay and as as i said it is free to use you don't have to pay anything for assessing this information and uh, a very important thing is you know uh, it it has all the elements of a real company okay which can be integrated into uh, solving this particular case okay so this was uh, broadly about you know the the teaching case on the risk management now i will take a uh, few more minutes to just uh, you know give you an idea about uh, this particular simulation so if you were to use this simulation for your full course as part of your curriculum so how can you use that so as you can see here there are already 100 plus uh, academic institutions which are using this simulation across the world so in, in india we have iim ahmedabad sp gen uh, mumbai uh, then we have iift delhi uh, and tfi management institute who use this uh, simulation as part of the curriculum and also very important thing is we use this simulation extensively for training uh, the corporates uh, in supply chain area and as you can see the brands uh, here you know the companies who have gone through this particular simulation as part of their training initiatives so what are the benefits of using this simulation first of all it's a, it's it's an online simulation okay so it does not require any kind of physical room uh, classroom a uh, student can access the information the supporting material the reading material the concepts conceptual material along with the you know the simulation uh, on their own and as i have shown you uh, 
uh, there is a whole lot of help which is available to be to be able to refer to in case you know they find it difficult to understand some of the things so all that information is available online okay uh, so it can be very easily done in an online scenario okay the second important benefit is you know it has complete supply chain of a company uh, you know which uh, has the demand management component capacity management inventory management and supplier management components so that actually gives the complete understanding of end to end supply chain and the third important benefit is uh, this it, it helps to develop the systems thinking by solving the trade offs in end to end supply chain so as you know the decisions made in the uh, customer service area can have an impact on the rest of the supply chain in terms of uh, what kind of uh, safety stocks etc you will use uh, uh, plan for your supply chain or what kind of suppliers you will select uh, you know depending on their lead time and their uh, responsiveness and their reliability so it's actually one integrated decision so normally when the uh, supply chain is taught in the classroom it is taught in you know bits and pieces you know for example at any point of time the student is undergoing uh, to in either inventory management uh, concepts or undergoing the uh, operations management concept or quality management but here they can actually apply these concepts in a very integrated way so this is not broken into the smaller concepts okay and so every trade off which has to be uh, balanced or solved it requires a collaborative decision making between the four functional roles that we talked about the fourth uh, benefit is you know the student can actually see the relationship between their functional performance and the financial performance of the business so that uh, the due point analysis that we teach in the classroom they can actually experience it in the simulation then you know there are multiple themes that can be integrated with this particular simulation for example supply chain visualization mapping kpi analysis problem solving segmentation and strategy sales and operations planning inventory optimization external collaboration risk management carbon footprint so whole lot of themes are available which can be integrated as part of your curriculum uh, then the students are given six rounds so you know they have a progressive learning approach so each round has a specific themes you know as we talked about in the previous point so one of these themes will be associated with each round so they will be able to go through all the possible themes which are critical you know uh, for them to understand the entire supply chain management finally you know the train the trainer module is available for the professors teachers and the facilitators they can go through the uh, through that module train themselves on their own or if they still need a you know a local support then i am always available uh, you know for any kind of support okay so these are some of the learning outcomes uh, of this uh, simulation so all the concepts that are taught in the supply chain management course can be integrated with uh, this particular simulation Uh, as i said you know it helps to students to promote the system thinking approach uh, looking at the entire end to end supply chain as one particular system uh, then they can also look at you know what are the various supply chain levers which are available to improve the business performance you know as they can clearly see the decision making in their functional area uh, and its impact on the uh, financial performance of the business okay and very important you know the collaborative decision making Uh, you know for solving the trade offs rather than working in their own specific silos so if they work on uh, in their own silos if for example the purchasing wants to maximize the purchasing performance and the uh, sales want to maximize the sales performance so they will see at the end of the round the roi of the company would actually go down and not improve okay so unless they have a good alignment uh, in their decision making they will not be able to improve the roi of the company so that is the biggest uh, learning which uh, the students will get out of this particular simulation so we would recommend you know please evaluate the simulation for your course curriculum as well apart from using it from the uh, teaching case that we discussed about okay and i can share more details uh, if you need or if you want to do a trial of the entire simulation i can also uh, share that uh, trial logins with you okay 
So thank you very much uh, for being patient and going through this particular case and the uh, overall simulation approach uh, for integrating with, with the course curriculum. Okay. So thank you.